passed Senate Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 1991. The bill was fraudulently introduced as a reform to prevent future incidents of the abuses brought to light during the Iran-Contra scandal. Instead of preventing future abuses, however, it virtually authorizes essentially every abuse. The bill was carefully brought to a vote by Senator Sam Nunn in the dead of night when the opposition was gone. It effectively transfers most authority over the United States government directly into the hands of the president and thus directly into the hands of the secret government. The president was given the power to initiate war, appropriate public funds, define foreign policy goals, and decide what is important to our national security. In Oversight of Intelligence Activities, Title VII, Senate Bill 2834 authorizes the following. Gives the President power to initiate covert actions. This has never before been given to the President. Prevents Congress from stopping the President's initiation of covert actions. Allows the President to use any federal departments, agencies, or entities to operate or finance a covert operation, empowers the president to use any other nation or private contractor or person to fund or operate a covert action, redefines covert actions as operations necessary to support foreign policy objectives of the United States, a definition that is so vague and broad as to be essentially unlimited for the first time officially claims the right of the United States to secretly interfere in the internal, political, economic, or military affairs of other countries in direct and flagrant violation of international law, requires that the President prepare and deliver a written finding to the intelligence committees of the Congress, but allows the President to omit extremely sensitive matters, and authorizes the President to claim executive privilege if Congress asks too many questions. There are no penalties in the bill for violating any of its provisions, including the provision requiring a finding. Why should there be? This bill has literally handed the power of all the branches of government to the President on a silver platter. The bill effectively prevents any oversight by anyone and allows the executive branch to skirt the law and to escape accountability. This will be done using national security directives. Either National Security Decision Directive 138 or a subsequent NSD Directive on Terrorism authorized the training of three Lebanese units for preemptive strikes. When problems arose, Director of Central Intelligence William Casey took that operation off the books and enlisted Saudi Arabian help in an attempt to assassinate the head of Hezbollah. A resulting car bombing killed about 80 in Beirut. Sheikh Fadlala, the target, was unhurt. The United States military, along with civilian law enforcement teams, conducted joint anti-terrorist training across America. To allay public fears, the participants wore civilian clothing. NSD directives have become the de facto legislative vehicle of the national security state. It has become known through the research of Susan Fitzgerald, a research consultant at the Fund for Constitutional Government in Washington who has collected declassified NSD directives that many were released without the White House letterhead at the top of the page and without the President's signature at the bottom. This, she speculates, is to conceal the fact that the signatures on some of them would reveal that they had been made by auto pen, not by Ronald Reagan's own hand. That should give you a taste of what we are up against. Please understand 
that virtually all but a very few NSD directives still remain classified, and unless the public forces disclosure, their effect will probably never be known. Somewhere within the volumes of secret NSD directives, there is a plan to suspend the Constitution of the United States of America. The existence of this plan surfaced during the Iran-Contra hearings. Congressman Jack Brooks, Democrat from Texas, attempted to bring it into the open. When he asked Colonel Oliver North directly if North had ever helped draft a plan to suspend the Constitution, Brooks was silenced by the committee chairman, Senator Daniel K. Inouye, Democrat from Hawaii. Senator Inouye stated that the subject dealt with national security, and any questions regarding the matter could be brought up during a closed-door session. We never learned the outcome. I would like to know who gave anyone, in any branch of government, with any title, the right to suspend the Constitution at any time, for any reason, under any conditions. I believe the plan to suspend the Constitution is directly tied to the underground facility called Mount Weather and to the Federal Emergency Management Agency known as FEMA. Mount Weather is so shrouded in secrecy that 99.9% .9 of Americans have never heard of it. FEMA, however, is another story. Remember Hurricane Hugo? Remember the federal agency FEMA that was sent to handle the emergency and was thrown out by the citizens because of gross incompetence? FEMA was incompetent because emergency management is just a guise for its real purpose, which is to take over local, state, and federal government in case of a national emergency. The only way FEMA could do such a thing is if the Constitution were suspended and martial law were to be declared. Therefore, its very existence is proof positive that a plan to suspend the Constitution does, in fact, exist. Just outside of a sleepy little town called Bluemont, Virginia, about 46 miles west of Washington, D.C., is an area of wilderness covering what has been called the toughest granite rock in the eastern United States. The area is surrounded by signs marked Restricted Area and This installation has been declared a restricted area. Unauthorized entry is prohibited. Other signs state All persons and vehicles entering hereon are liable to search. Photographing, making notes, Drawings, maps, or graphic representations of this area or its activities is prohibited. Such material found in the possession of unauthorized persons will be confiscated. Internal Security Act of 1950 The installation is beneath a mountain, and its name is the Western Virginia Office of Controlled Conflict Operations. Its nickname is Mount Weather. It was ordered to be built by the Federal Civil Defense Administration, which is now the Federal Preparedness Agency. Mount Weather was designed in the early 50s as part of a civil defense program to house and protect the executive branch of the federal government. The official name was the Continuity of Government Program. Congress has repeatedly tried to discover the real purpose of Mount Weather, but so far has been unable to find out anything about this secret installation. Retired Air Force General Leslie W. Bray, director of the Federal Preparedness Agency, told the Senate Subcommittee on Constitutional Rights in September 1975. I am not at liberty to describe precisely what is the role and the mission and the capability that we have at Mount Weather or at any other precise location. In June 1975, Senator John Tunney, Democrat from California, chairman of the Subcommittee on Constitutional Rights, 
charged that Mount Weather held dossiers on at least 100,000 Americans. 